today I'm going to talk to you about the concept of the literal, L-I-T-T-O-R-A-L, in Gwen Howard's poetry. I've written it up on the board, but you probably can't see it, but I'm going to go through the definition with you so you know exactly what's going on. Now, the literal, interestingly enough, is a geographic term, and it means the zone between the limits of high and low tide. That's the definition I've written up on the board. I'm going to say that again. The zone between the limits of high and low tide. But in literature, the literal has come to mean something more. And it's about this concept of transition, about places in which there is the possibility for shift and change. So if we take it from geography and we talk about the zone between the limits of high and low tide, the first concept of what is a literal space is the seashore. Now, we're going to find that the seashore is a recurrent theme in Gwen Howard's poetry. At Mornington, straight away, is about this idea of what happens on the edge of the sea. But then let's take it beyond the idea of geography and let's, let's think about it in scientific terms. And the literal can also be about shifts in time. When is that time when we have a possibility of change? And the most obvious examples are at dusk, when the sun is going down, the shift from day to night, and at dawn, when the sun is coming up, the shift from night to day. Now, these are, of course, also going to appear in Gwen Howard's poetry, and we're going to see that in the poem Father and Child. And very interesting, the first poem starts with the word daybreak. Straight away, Gwen Howard is setting you up to realise that this is about the literal space. And the second poem is called Nightfall. She's flagging it for you straight away is this idea that, um, that this is transitional time. Now, in, we're looking at the poems that we've discussed with Gwen Howard, but even within her other poetry, if you even go through the titles of her poems over and over again, you will get names which suggest this idea of the literal space. She has a poem called Daybreak. She has another poem called Estuary, that kind of meeting place between a river meeting the sea. At the sea's edge, ebb tide, like... Over and over again, this becomes a common thematic concern for Gwen Howard. Now, I have given you all a quote that I gave to you last lesson that I want you to look at now. And this quote is from Jennifer Strauss, who's one of the experts on Gwen Howard. And it's very literary. It sounds really fancy like English teachers do. But let's look at the quote because it's a very interesting quote in exploring this idea of the literal. And it says, the literal is the simultaneous recognition and confounding of dualistic boundaries is a characteristic of Gwen Howard's work, whether these boundaries be between flesh and spirit, the world and language, the mundane and the transcendental, life and death, past and present, the learned and the homely, sharpness and sweetness, wit and sentiment. What is really good about that quote, which no one would expect you to learn the whole quote, but what is really good is how Strauss is identifying this sense of duality in Howard's poem, this idea of two opposing elements and that border between the two opposing elements is the literal. Now, why is it important? That's the next step. We can identify it in her poetry. We can go through and we can look at, for example, where is this idea of the boundary between flesh and spirit? And we're going to see it in something like Trist Trist, okay, where this idea of in that moment between our wakefulness and sleep, what is going on? We're going to see it geographically in At Mornington. We're going to look at it in terms of time in Father and Child. Um, at Mornington is going to talk about this idea of autumn as well, which is another transitional time. And then if we talk about the violets, 
she talks about the sunset going down. So it's like it's not just a minor motif, it's a constant element in her poetry that you really need to think about. And why? The question is, why does Howard use the literal? And she uses it because the literal, the time of transition, is about possibility. I think more than anything, this suggests that Gwen Howard is a poet who is optimistic rather than pessimistic, or certainly in the poems that we are discussing with her. Because in this time of transition, or this place of transition, whichever it may be, what Howard sees is that there is potential for change. And even if that change is the shift from life to death, which is implicit in Nightfall, the second part of the diptych, which is father and child, there is not a sense of pessimism. There is a sense of embracing of the potential for change. This is what is so characteristic of certainly the seven poems that we are discussing with her. And we can go through and we can talk about the difference between the flesh and the spirit and that transitional zone, and we can identify Trist Trist. Or we can talk about the mundane and the transcendental, and we come to a valediction. Again, we also get that in Mother Who Gave Me Life, where we get this kind of motif of fabric, and, but in, done in very different ways. The fabric of marvels, she was folding a little town. And then we have the transcendental, and we have the homely and the domestic. Life and death, of course, we see in Father and Child. It's there all the way through that poem. It's also there, to some extent, in At Mornington, where we have the child's youthfulness and that kind of bravado where she ignores death. Then we have the scene in the graveyard, but at the same time, we have this conflict, this tension between life and death. And so we have the quick of the grasses, which is above all an image of life in an environment of death. Then we can talk about past and present, the violets, at Mornington, father and child, mother who gave me life. It's just something that is so inherent in her poetry. The learned and the homely. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk about valediction, where she compares reading John Donne, dear Dr Dunn, and then thinks about her peacefulness among her geese. So here we've got again the mixture of the two kind of dualities that dominate her life. And what she has is a reconciliation of those. Sharpness in the sharpness of death, which of course brings in the whole idea of sharpness and sweetness, and so death itself being sharp, the, the sharpness. Whereas nasturtions within that cycle of poetry is about celebration and life and I would say sweetness. So this idea of the literal and the idea of duality is something that you need to think about during um, throughout Howard's poetry. So when we come into class tomorrow, what I want you to have done is I want you to have picked two of her poems. And what you are to do is to identify the duality in both those poems. So what I want is a list. Here's a list of one. Here's the list of the other. What are the conflicting elements what is the literal zone in that poem? I want you to identify five quotes from each of the poems that either addresses the idea of duality or addresses the idea of the literal zone. And then when you come into class, we're going to write a paragraph. And the paragraph is going to be under the title of, and I, I um, will post it on Google Docs, but as well, the paragraph is going to be under the title of Gwen Harwood's poetry succeeds because in her discussion of the literal is the possibility of change. So, you can go over what I've said before, but I want to really focus on two of her poems and I want you to have that prepped 
You're going to come into class tomorrow. We're going to write a practice paragraph, just a paragraph, on one of those um, poems and under time constraints. And then we're going to build on our study of Gwen Howard. Hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.